from Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. This is Tar Hill Illustrated. Com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. Joining me as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones and AJ. Here after Carolina's 45-32 loss to Notre Dame here on this very field right here. And I think there's really only, there's a lot of things we could talk about. There's a lot of things we will talk about um, in, in this three things video. But AJ, I think it starts with the defense again on Carolina's side and its abil inability, I should say, to be able to stop the run uh, over two what was it 287 rushing yards for Notre Dame I believe and I was over here doing photos and I think more so than that it, it wasn't just the fact that Notre Dame was running all over Carolina kind of getting what it wanted to but it just seemed like it was kind of doing it in first gear it didn't really seem at times especially you know in that fourth quarter which really padded the stats that they were having to do much to even get you know five ten yard gains on Carolina's defense so AJ I think that's where it started that's where the game was dominated, over 500 total yards in offense for Notre Dame on the game. And I think what it speaks to is, again, we've talked about it when Carolina's come up against big teams in the Mac Brown Part 2 era. Just getting out physical on the line of scrimmage, again, beating the trenches. That's where big-time football starts. And I think we saw Carolina on both sides of the ball get dominated down there again. They got whipped. Yeah. They got gashed. Players. They got whipped. Uh, from my vantage point up there in the press box, the holes were huge. They were huge, Even more evident and down they here, were yeah. everywhere at the line of scrimmage. And then, because of that, and Mac addressed this after the game, you know, they sucked at the linebackers in so much, they'd run a wheel route, <laughs> and they'd get 20 yards, yeah. 25 yards, 18 yards, whatever. But I was I always track the 10-plus yeah. yard plays and stuff, and I have to go back and look at it. So we we were in a rush. When the game ends, we got to rush down, wait to do press conference and players, and I rush up and load videos and come down here. So I don't gorge on the stats entirely, but – my last count, there were 12 runs of 10 or more yards. Then you could add another six of seven or more yards. And, and, but then that doesn't include the fives. Yeah. It doesn't include the four, the they're five, still and good the games, six. Yeah. And, they're just, and they're getting that stuff just to complement everything. And they also had, I don't know, a, a close to a dozen pass plays like that. Yeah. The run set up the pass, and it, Carolina looked helpless defensively. The first two series, really good. Yeah, they looked good. Just they had the two game. batter balls. They had a sack, and uh, they got a PBU, which mm -hmm. they only had three of coming into the game on mm -hmm. 100 pass attempts allowed by opponents. Yeah. After that, they were terrible. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they got a stop on a fourth down. I hope yeah. Notre Dame actually left points in the field. Oh, they did. Which is kind of terrifying. I'm surprised they still have the score posted up here in mm -hmm. the stadium, 45-32. 45-32, and it was not that close. No, 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 no. no. Uh, the game was over at the end of the third Yeah, quarter. and we're going to address the line of scrimmage stuff later on in this, too. We're going to hit on both sides. But as far as what Notre Dame did offensively, what Carolina didn't do, you know, Cedric Gray was asked after the game, you know, level of frustration when you kind of know what they're going to do and you still can't stop it. He didn't really have an answer. And I feel bad for the kid having to get up and answer those questions. It's it's a difficult thing. And it's, yeah, it's, it's one of the great things about their experiences that they get to do that when their fellow students aren't. So yeah. they can grow in a different kind of way, right? But it's still a tough question. And he didn't really have an answer because there really is no answer because they got whipped. Hmm. There's no other way around it. Max said it himself. They got whipped. He, Matt called Notre Dame a top 10 team. I don't think this is a top no, 10 no, team. I think, no. But we have to wait and see. More of the season has to play out. What we do know is that North Carolina, the issues it had for lengthy periods in its first three games was an issue here. Yeah. They told us that they fixed the communication to secondary Mac acts. I asked him today, and he said, well, you know, what? that wasn't as much the issue. We had problems with linebacker coverage, which is true because – you know, linebackers are supposed to cover tight ends a lot of the time or a safety. And how often was Michael Mayer Michael wide Mayer open? I mean, he's the one guy on that team, other than the quarterback and center, who have to touch the ball. Yeah. You know that they're going to try to get him the ball. And there were times where there was nobody anywhere near him. They even ran a jet sweep to him. I know. So there were breakdowns defensively for Carolina. They were physically getting beaten. And then they got frustrated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Noah Taylor, Tony Grimes thing, we saw that up in the press box. It was on TV. We have monitors yeah, up saw there. It on, on TV, TV. Well, yeah. And there were some questions about that. And, and the, the, the narrative, I think, is really passionate guys, frustrating yeah. because things, it's frustrating because things are going well, and that flares up. As a former athlete at the high school level, I remember that stuff happened yeah, at our down, level, and it wasn't nearly as important there. So I can only imagine what it's like for these guys. But it's a bad look. 
the penalty on Grimes in that situation is a bad look. They had three major penalties in a four-snap sequence down there. Max said that Ray Vahasek tripped and then fell on the mm -hmm. Fell into the pod, quarterback. So yeah. that's why he got that. But it's still a penalty. Yeah. I mean, they, they didn't help themselves in a multitude of ways defensively. Most importantly, they just didn't play well. Mm -hmm. This is four games now for this defense. And against App State, they had the thir they had the fourth quarter where they allowed 40 points, 338 yards, and 18 first downs. Against Georgia State, who was 0-4, lost three in a row at yeah, home. Yeah, not a good football team, no. Well, we thought they might have been yeah. okay, but now they're not. Mm -hmm. That's what game games yeah. are intel, right? In the third quarter, Georgia State, they gave up 205 yards and 10 first downs, 18 points. In the second quarter today, they gave up 267 yards, 13 first downs, 24 points. Notre Dame in that quarter matched its previous game high yeah. in points. Mm. And then Notre Dame scored two quick touchdowns in the second half. Mm. So in, in a span of around 21 minutes of football, Notre Dame had like 385, 90 yards, and they had 38 points. It's a lot like App State. Yeah, very similar. So this is a problem. And this is a problem that needs to be fixed. And how do you fix it? Max says Jimmy's and Joe's. Yeah. Well, they got a lot of highly rated kids. They got a lot of talented kids. A lot of teams around the country win with three-star guys and a smattering of four-star guys. Right now, this defense is not executing with that, and that must be addressed. It must be addressed by Gene. It must be addressed by Mac. It must be addressed by the players. It's not something that we're creating. We're not creating something that isn't there. Mm -hmm. Everybody watching this or listening to us right now, you saw it. 61 at App, 24 by FAMU, 61 App, Georgia State had 28 and had a ton of success. They gave up 45 today, Notre Dame left points in the field. Yeah. The defense is bad right now. It's had a few moments. It's bad. It needs to get a lot better or this team is not going to reach its goals. Yeah, no doubt. It just kind of feels like, from my perspective, at least you probably agree in some way, I just feel like over the last 14 months, it's been kind of the same story on the defense uh, in a lot of ways. You know, well, even it just... Same problems. The different, like. the same result of play once a ball snapped. Yeah. They look a lot more organized in pre-snap, but then once the ball snapped, they look. I have no clue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went. I don't think it's fair to say that. At times. I, I, I think that's easy for people to see that I, they're just not handling. They're not playing well. They're mm. they're not handling a lot of scrimmage well, too much of the time. Even Tucker Gregg from Georgia State had the inside runs were beating him there. So yeah. you've got to be tougher up front. You've got to fit the runs. You've got to, you've got to dominate the gaps. And right now they're not doing that. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it starts in the trenches. It feels like Carolina should be better on the defensive line, especially, and just haven't been able to really get a lot going in terms of that. Yeah. So we'll see what happens going on to the rest of your ages. Flip to the other side of the ball. We talk about the run once again. Except we're going to focus on Carolina's offense here. Carolina couldn't establish a run. 66 rushing yards on the day. She's not good enough, especially when you look at the talent back there for North Carolina. And again, AJ, this is what it speaks to me, and I think a lot of football people will agree. When, you're, when you struggle like that to run, yeah. that is, again, a problem in the trenches. You don't have the guys, and you're not winning that line of scrimmage battle. We talked about it in nauseam, and we've, come, we've, we've done so many pregame shows for big games like this, even going back to the Clemson game years ago, Notre Dame game in the, over the last couple of years. We've always said it starts down there. Carolina has to win that battle, or at least compete at a very high level at that battle. And again, on the offense and on the defensive side of the ball, we're talking about the offense here. Just weren't able to do that. No, they 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 didn't run the ball well at all. They had Drake had a couple runs that skewed the stats, and then there were some sacks that skewed the stats. They actually balanced out over time. Yeah. I did a piece earlier this week, and and I did it because Phil, what Phil Longo told us Monday at, in the press conference, when he said we need to be, be better at running the ball on early downs, first and second downs. So I crunched the numbers. I went back through every game, looked at every run on first down, every run on second down, ran a piece on it. And they had had 94 for run, running plays on first and second down coming into this game. 54 had been three yards or less. So it was clear what Phil's concern was. So how would they do in a game like this? Well, I haven't crunched that part of the numbers yet, but I was tracking the first and second down runs. And combined, they had 18 credited runs tonight. On first and second down, they had 24 yards. Mm -hmm. Now, three of those were sacks for 25, so if you remove those, that's 15 conventional runs for 49 yards, which is 3.1 yards an attempt, and you're not going to beat 
most teams. Especially not Notre Dame, yeah. And it's certainly not Notre Dame when that happens. You have to be a lot better than that. So as I think as ineffective, as bad as they were at stopping the run on, on the defensive side, they were that ineffective at establishing the run on the offensive side. It made them more predictable. We talked about this. Yeah, we did. We, we talked, talked about, about, about it. We wrote right? about it all week. They became more predictable with their offense, and Notre Dame was less productive. Notre Dame was able to kind of dip into its bag yeah, a little bit some and show some things that didn't have to too much, but it did enough of that. So it made Notre Dame's job easy because Carolina was not effective at moving them along. And I do think the difference here, and Mac talked Jimmy's and Joe's, and we can feed into this here in a second mm-hmm. with the last point, but Carolina's got a lot of talent, identified talent on the defensive side. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to just go by high school rankings, in star rankings, which, again, the teams that win a ton, go look at the star rankings of the roster versus the other ones. Sometimes you're going to get a guy that comes in that's not highly rated and becomes a star. That happens. Mm-hmm. A lot of highly rated kids don't pan out, but when you load your roster with them, you only need about 50% yeah. of them to pan yeah. out, and you're pretty you good shape, be, right? Well, right Carolina's now. got a lot of talent on that side of the ball. And on the defensive line, they have more highly rated guys here than you do on the offensive line. The offensive line, I told you back in August, uh, there was a patchwork element to it. I wasn't confident it was going to be really good. And this past week, they were moving Spencer rolling at guard. You know, in, in August, they told us, no, he's only working at both tackles, mm-hmm. mostly right tackle. And then here we are on the open date, and they're working him some at guard. Now, he played tackle the whole time today. But William Barnes told us Tuesday he was a starting right tackle this week. So, and I don't know how much they subbed on the offensive line. Yeah, I didn't notice I don't think they ton, subbed much at all. They didn't really sub a ton on offense, really, at all. No. So... I don't, I don't think they're real good on the offensive line as it is. I, I think there are a lot of times there. And Mac did praise their pass protection. They only got the Drake three times. Yes. He did have time to throw. Mm-hmm. So we'll give him a little bit of credit there. But this team has issues on both sides of the line of scrimmage when they go up against big boys. And that's what happened today. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hey, Joe, let's talk about what this means, like kind of like we always do in these two things videos to wrap them up. Um, we talked about it in our pregame the video UNC football show and a lot of other people in the media were saying it kind of describing this is a must win for Carolina in a lot of ways when you're looking at the progress of the program now is it a must win for this season no and ACC no but when in terms of looking back stated mission stated goals of when Mac Brown came back in um, and is with his first season in 2019 we've talked about you know Carolina's got to be able to eventually compete and, and pull one of these games out especially when you look at a, a Notre Dame team that like Max said, a top 10 team. I think Carolina made them look like a top 10 team today. I don't think Notre Dame is necessarily for what we've seen this year. No, no doubt about it. <laughs> I think they're a good team. Do I think they're a top 10 football team? I don't. We'll they see what happens. They played really well, but yeah. Carolina helped them. Yeah, 100%. So you look at the whole picture, and even going back to the Twitter space we had on Monday, there was a you, you got the vibe from the Carolina fans, and even going into the other game with some other stuff, I saw that the vibe was positive. A lot of Carolina fans were picking a win today. And I don't know necessarily, I think a lot of it had to do maybe with the bye week or maybe just going into a game like this. You're excited. You want to see this team Notre play Dame well. Struggling. Yeah, and Notre Dame struggling too. But, you know, one of my concerns that we talked about in the pregame show was, okay, I just haven't seen enough out of this defense so far this year to think they can go out there and stop Notre Dame. And it's exactly what happened today. So, AJ, when you look back to Mac Brown's first press conference in that building right there, going to now and where we are against Notre Dame here, I know it's kind of a what does this mean for this year's team, but I think it also needs to be a broader picture of, okay, what does it mean for the program and where they're at right now? Must win is is a pretty strong way to look at it. I think a lot of the people paid money to be in here today saw it as a must win because they, they, they needed to see tangible evidence other than recruiting rankings and a renovated Keenan Football Center and all the bling and, and terrific social media branding, which are all really important elements to a program and and a lot of times that stuff's going to come first yeah, because yeah, you yeah. have total control over that yeah, right you gotta, yeah you don't have total control over what happens on the field because the other team's trying too and they got good players too so i think a lot of people that were here saw this as a must win as journalists we don't see things through an emotional lens like a lot of fans do so i'm not going to say this was a must win game i did write a column this week saying it's a barometer game Mm -hmm. and and i'm also not even going to go so far as say it was a fork in the road game that'll be determined by what happens there's a certainly a chance that the way this played out and i think that there were a lot of ugly marks all over this game that it could go this way which is the wrong way and we'll know next week when a when a, an embarrassed Hokies team comes in here god the next three games don't look anywhere near yeah. as hard as they did four out five yeah, hours yeah, literally, ago yeah. but 
that'll kind of take, take care of itself as, as they unveil the, the rest of the season. I think it was a barometer game, and it goes to what we were saying. And it's Mac's words. Mac did say, we're a good program, but to be a great program, we have to beat a team like Notre yeah, Dame. Yeah. They didn't beat Notre Dame. They got trounced. Mm-hmm. So they're a good program. What does a good program mean? Well, Mac Brown came back to not run a good program. He came back to run a great program yeah. to make it great. It takes time. And sometimes you have to stumble a bunch to kind of get everything in order where it needs to be. We see flare-ups all the time in college sports, and those teams fall right on their face, and they're not yeah, any good. Never sustain, yeah. Yeah, it's not, and we see it in sports all the time. He wants to make this thing sustainable. I don't think they had this in mind. No. I think game four, year so. four, I think they thought that if you would have asked Mac the day they lost to Notre Dame here 22 months ago, the day after Thanksgiving 2020, when he fully articulated why they lost was they were not as good in the trenches. Notre Dame warmed down both sides of the ball. And he said, I'm paraphrasing, we need to get like that. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to become. If you would have asked him then, in 22 months, when Notre Dame comes back to Chapel Hill, how much ground do you think you will have made up in that area? I think he would have figured that they would have been more competitive at the line of scrimmage today, and they weren't. That's not a criticism of him. It's just a statement of where the program is. And all you have to do is go listen to his press conference today. Mm-hmm. And I asked him the first two questions about, about that. And he said, look, Notre Dame's won 25 straight in the ACC, regular season games. The Clemson loss was ACC championship a couple of years ago. He said, so a lot of other coaches up here are answering the same questions. Not every coach has proven what he's proven. Mm -hmm. Not every coach came back to a school like this one where he had in the top 10 for consecutive years and who's made the mission statement of getting back there. So we have to judge him based on the mission statement because I believe it's possible that North Carolina football can get back to that point. And I think he can get it back to that point. Perhaps he needed to go through another game like this. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk process all the time. Process wasn't just the first year. It wasn't even just the second year. And it wasn't just last year when we said, you know, Max learning, I said this a lot, he's learning a lot about what's not working so he can make some tweaks and move forward. We think he did that on the defensive side of the ball. Well, it's not working out yet. That doesn't mean it's not going to work out. I think he's someone who continually learns. That bank up there has got a lot of stuff in it. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's been doing it forever. And he's not running out of time. There are people out there on social media that think he's running out of time. Fire this guy, fire that guy. 42 games in, game four, year four, we haven't seen some of the areas of progress that he wants to see. Mm -hmm. So he wants to see it more than anybody else does, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Certainly my job is to articulate it, observe, Mm -hmm. write about it, ask about it, all that kind of stuff. So nobody's more disappointed than the guy whose office is up there. And the people that are in that building. Yeah. So where do they go from here? What does this mean? I think it means that North Carolina is a football team that has a massive question mark over it. We've seen a lot of really good stuff on offense, but even today they weren't very good. No, no, you that's know, a really th- bad stretch to say. A on third of their yeah. yards were the two Antoine Green touchdowns, yeah. and one of them was mop-up duty. Yeah. So we're going to learn a lot moving forward. The ACC is not very good again. I thought it was a little bit better than it was, but today, this weekend, proved the ACC is kind of bad again, and there's a lot of those bad teams on this club's schedule. If I think we can judge them more on what happens over the next eight games than we can just on this, because maybe it turns out Notre Dame is really good. You never know. Maybe it turns out Notre Dame finishes 10-2, and and they play in a New Year's Day ball game, right? Could happen, who knows? It it could happen. I, I think in order to judge Mac and the program and where it is in year four, we have to let games five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 play out. Mm. Those are games against programs that are peer programs and that are programs that are fair to judge North Carolina against. Judging them against Notre Dame in a in a broad scale judgment, I don't think is fair. It is fair to judge the struggles at the line of scrimmage because Mac pointed that out. 22 months ago, it said that's where we need to get. Well, it doesn't look like they've made any progress no. in that department. At least no. today suggests that. I think they're more talented now, but are they as good in that area? They weren't today. We'll see next week against another very physical team from Virginia Tech. If Virginia Tech gashes them, and they haven't gashed anybody. No. They Not gash them, then, then we'll have a different conversation. Yeah. Maybe. Especially but against that offense. They're still, you got to let this thing play out. Max said today, 
Some people were kind of making some snarky comments when he said, four games isn't a trend, talk to me after 12. So we'll do that. Yeah. We'll, we'll wait we'll be there. for the next date to see what happens, and we'll, we'll, we'll write about and talk about the trends, and, and we'll know exactly where the program is at the end of year four when I think the rest of the schedule, they're all winnable games, yeah, including Wake and State, although they're not as winnable <laughs> yeah, no. maybe as, as it seemed like a, you know, a week ago or yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah. Definitely. Good stuff, AJ. I think it's a great place. To wrap this one up, Carolina losing 45-32 in Keenan Stadium to Notre Dame. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. A lot, witnessed a lot of nice, crazy things in the stands today, AJ, during yeah. this Three Things video, which we won't hit on too much. Maybe like we'll mention. Maybe we'll, the stands, players going after it. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about it more in our uh, UNC football show later this uh, week, coming yeah. up before the Virginia Tech game. Maybe we'll, we'll Brandon Bra and I might do a podcast yeah. tomorrow or so Monday, too. We, we might start doing a, a third one during yeah. the week. Yeah, love that. Start talking about it a little bit more. But, again, guys, I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Make sure you keep it locked to TargetAllIllustrated.com for all your post-game coverage from tonight's game. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.